Information in my back. That was good. I feel like I have inflammation from uh, my mid-back all the way down right to my feet. Hey there, who's that? Arcanus, how's it going? I'm good. Um, pretty much everything you see in my apartment is all I got left besides my computer, my desk, and my and my fridge, like everything that's in the fridge. I've been moving stuff all day, cleaning as I go, and mostly I got everything organized. So I'm basically bringing it to a new apartment, and it's not staying in boxes. It's it's ending up in its uh, it's ending up where it's going to end up. Oh, I went for uh, a brief walk today. Oh, oh yeah. I'm uh, going to finish my workout. It's a little bit early. It's uh, well, it's not that early. It's 9 p.m. right now. I figure I'm going to go till 11 max, and then I'm going to take all my weights and I'm going to bring them to my new place. So my plan is finish this workout, uh, start taking my squat rack, my bench press, my bench press, I'm gonna have it here today. I didn't uh, bring, uh, move it yet because I want to use the quad extensions. And I'm gonna start grabbing things. I'm gonna start moving over to the next place. I have 500 pounds of weights I'm going to bring over. The only thing I'm gonna leave is tomorrow I will do weighted pull-ups. So I'll keep my, my belt, I'll keep my travel bench so I can easily load the weight, and I'll keep my I'll keep two 
50 pound weights and a 25 pound weight. I think that's what I'll, I think that's what I'll do. And I'll take everything else out of here. Oh. Well, I actually don't have to disassemble anything really. The only thing I might disassemble is uh, I take off four bolts here and uh, then I can easily get it through the stairwell and then into the truck I got. I have, uh, I have a work truck. I want to do some deadlifts today too, but I, I, that's probably not a good idea. I've done enough picking things up off the ground. But I want to, I want to pick it up without like twisting or doing any silly, like I, I want to just go back to feeling like I'm deadlifting properly. I can feel the inflammation right there. I took Thursday, Friday off of work, but I ended up showing up at work on Thursday anyways. And uh, <clears throat> the, the, the truck I, I borrowed, I had to take out uh, 1,500 to, to uh, 2,000 pounds of concrete blocks out of the back of this truck. They're like 200 pounds each, I'm grabbing them. And uh, I was I was sore just after cleaning out that that truck. The back of it had not get got cleaned out in like seven years, and it was it's been used for concrete testing. Oh. And they had concrete slabs in it to add some weight for the winter. Oh. Yeah, my calves are. So, I'll probably warm up. Uh, I, I already warmed up a little bit. I went for a walk. I, I did a power walk for half an hour before I started streaming. Oh, that's so much information. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I can't even put my full weight on this one. Alright, I've had enough of that. Get some air on the air in here. I feel uh, I feel good though. I feel like a tank. I'm open a window. And I think I'm gonna move the camera up to here. Went all blurry on me.
I have all this room here, but I guess I gotta be here or I can't get my, like what I want, I want to be able to see the weight at my feet and see my head at the same time. So maybe I'll raise it just a, a tad. That song's over. Oh. Probably not going to go super heavy today. Hey there. How's it going, Crossbow? <clears throat> oh, it was it was RuneScape yesterday, right? Today, uh, League of Legends. Oh. I almost want to go in the full world again. I can feel the inflammation right here. I got inflammation right about there. I could go for a massage, but the pandemic shut all that down. All right, let's go straight to having some weight on this thing. You're a copy editor and a team leader. What do you uh, spend your time editing? So, I gotta dig out my 50s. My 50s are all the way at the bottom here. Underneath the 100 pounds. 25s. It's not going to fit. If I take this weight out a little bit, the whole uh, the bar will, will tip. Yeah, managing people usually is high stress. For my job, I pretty much spent, I, I dealt with a lot of people, but uh, I'm the guy who solves their problems. Like they, they have a problem, they come to me. And I sometimes it's a situation I never faced before, but I have to figure out a way to make it work.
uh, I went for a walk right before I uh, right before I, I started streaming, and I had just finished taking a load. So I, I just finished taking taking a load of stuff to my new place. And I went up and down, and then afterwards I went to the store to get a couple more boxes. And it was really warm outside. I get home. Uh, I I eat my meal. So I, I spend 15 minutes eating my meal, uh, like 10 minutes and 15 minutes between cooking it and then eating it and actually heating, warming it up and then eating it. And in that like 25 minutes, um, I thought like, man, it was so hot. I'm just going to go out there and put my shirt on and I'll just go for a walk. And suddenly the temperature just dropped and the wind picked up. So now the wind is just billowing. And uh, it was, I didn't realize how much on my way out. But then on the way back, it was, it was, uh, I had a hat, I had to take off my hat because uh, I couldn't keep it on my head. What have I eaten today? Uh, woke up, I had my veggie shake, my berry shake, and my flax oil. Then I had some uh, um, French toast, uh, anabolic French toast. Uh, with Greek yogurt and with protein pudding. Uh, then uh, a little bit later, I had a peanut butter powder and honey sandwich just for some energy. Um, and then I, I had two uh, meals. So I actually had uh, I had like supper twice. So I had for supper I had. I have chicken, my meats are chicken thighs, ground beef, and uh, chicken breast, which I sliced, and I, was, and I cooked it with, with uh, like banana peppers. And, um, and then for my vegetables, all I have is broccoli. I, I cooked um, eight pots of broccoli the other day. So I had four big pots going at once, and then I cooked all that, like as much broccoli as I could fit in there, put it in the fridge, then I cooked another two pots while I had two pans going. And I had two pans going, two pots going. Um, and then I finished all two pots, put them away, put another two pan, put another two, put another two pots, put another two pans. And that was uh, that was my cooking. No, actually, no, I didn't. I only did two pans because I already had. So I, while the pans were cooking, I, I cooked two things of broccoli. And. Uh, and uh, I have just enough rice left to satisfy me for tomorrow, and then um, I'll make new ri make rice at the new place. Whoa! I do not feel like I can lift a lot of heavy weight today. I'm almost doing like a low bar back squat to keep the pressure, like to minimize how much I have to stabilize my core. But yeah, not too long ago I pulled my neck. That's 100% better. I no more. I have no more pulled neck. So that was uh, warm up set. Well, the first thing I started doing was learning how to count calories. I bought a scale, I weighed everything I ate. I did that for probably about a year and I got sick of it. Then I was focusing more on my macros, which really don't matter as much. But uh, like if I was hungry, I'd eat. And I, I bulked like five to 6,000 calories a day for like three years. And 
at that point, this becomes routine where I, like, I was within a thousand calorie range, but I, I wasn't measuring my calories. I was just eating tons of food, and I was, I was having, I was having meals where I was full, 24 hours a day. I, I would wake up full, just to eat some more. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm the smallest I've been uh, in a long, long time. I typically train over 200 pounds, and I'm 190. I might even be like 187, 186 now. I've, I, I lost a bit of, actually, I'm probably close to 190 again. When I got my COVID shot, I lost my appetite, and I went down to about 185. But then I started uh, getting my appetite back, and I started uh, getting some getting that weight back. No, I've uh, never had the inclination to compete. Um, I would be right there in the thick and thin with people who did compete, and I like we'd, we'd be training together. But in the end, they have a competition that they want to do, or they would. Or they have a meet, and I, I, I didn't. So I was, uh, I would occasionally be like, oh, this this summer I wanna get, I wanna be, like, I, I would be over 200 pounds, and I, I had abs like always. Um, but I used to actually train my abs, and now I, I actually don't train my abs so much. Um, I, I get bored of ab training. I'll do more of a traditional squat. Yeah, I can feel the inflammation in there. Monday is going to be my break day, so I'm going to I'm going to make it to Monday, and then I might take two days off. I haven't taken two days off in quite a while, which is which which feels good. Yeah, I'm farther away from the stream than I normally am, so I gotta walk up to read chat. Well, I like I would do crunches. I do the heel tucks, uh, the, the, the heel toes, or the heel touches, and a couple other like bread and butter standard ab exercises. Uh, but I do it all in 15 minutes. So I would do like I do like 75 crunches, 75 heel touches. Uh, then I go back to 75 crunches, 75 heel touches, until, and, like, you go until it starts to burn, and then, and then you keep going. And uh, then I'd switch doing some some twisting, but a lot of it was contracting. And 15 minutes, like, really quick, just get, like, go until your gut hurts, uh, then give up and go have a shower. But doing that regularly every day, I got really good results from it. Uh, now, now when I do ab exercises, I have to mix it up. Like I gotta do windshield wipers. I gotta do some calisthenics. I gotta, I gotta just try different exercises because the the bread and butter ab exercises they work, but they bore me now. Uh, when I bring the camera down, maybe I'll flex my legs. Like, I, 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 can sh I, I can see, like, leg muscle, right? But it's not, it's not like adding, like, the, the teardrop that I want. Like, it's just not shaped. Um, my, my legs are actually 
quite strong, but uh, they're, they haven't developed the size that they used to. Um, I couldn't train legs for two years, and I only started training legs again in 2020. And for the first time in my life, I was the upside down bottle, and I hated it, but there's nothing I could do about it because uh, I couldn't pick anything up. I couldn't pick weight up off the floor. When I was training, I would like have the, a, a bench beside me. I put my weights on the bench because I couldn't pick them up off the floor. I had to keep everything here. And as long as I had the weight around here, I was very strong. But as soon as I like pick something up off the floor, couldn't do it. Um, I could also like up here, I'm strong. When, 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 when the weights, when, when, I, when, I, when I'm holding the weights anywhere above here, I'm, I'm strong to do whatever I want to do. But uh, I remember, um, like, like for, for the cables, right? Like, like doing the chest. Well, when, when you have the the cables on the ground, I had a hard time just picking up the handles off the floor. And um, I was also a little bit less lean once, like when I wasn't able to train legs. Because when I was training legs twice a week to the point where it was like hard to sit on the toilet, like through for, like every, every, every day, just because you're like, your legs are so sore and you have to be like, oh, okay. It's like your legs just don't want to listen to you because they're just always in recovery mode. But I was... I was like 225 and very lean, but uh, I also had like when I when I lost when I hurt my disc, I, I lost so much weight. I actually watched my legs shrivel up in real time because uh, I was still training my back. Um, I could do pull-ups. Um, I could do some chest exercises. I could do some arm exercises, so I could maintain the muscle a little bit better. But for legs, not not a thing. And then when I was able to start training legs again, I couldn't do compound lifts. I had to do everything in isolation, which was I've never done before. I, like when I when I used to train, it was like 90% uh, compound lifts, 10% isolation. Because uh, because for myself, I almost never did quad extensions. Instead, I would do leg presses. And now. Uh, during my recovery, I had a whole bunch of physiotherapy exercises that I was supposed to do every day, which I did. But uh, I was like training my hamstrings, my glutes, my quads, my calves, all in isolation. The, uh, doing the glutes on the back extension machine was a godsend. That thing fixed me up faster than a lot of other stuff did. All right, I'm starting to feel more limber now. My body's warm. All right, so let's add some weight. Yeah, I, I remember that, uh, that that bird in, in the gut. Um, I, I, I almost never got cramps though. It was just uh, uh, my, my abs were conditioned enough that you just get that slow burn until you start getting a lactic acid buildup in your stomach and uh, in your abs. And that's, uh...
down this exercise here is the best for, for warming up my knees. Almost artificially keep your knee in. Don't never let your knee come out and hurt yourself. But I might not go heavier than this today. This is just uh, 175 pounds. Uh -oh. um, I might still struggle on this a little bit. Um, for, for myself, I'm watching the numbers, and I, even when the gyms are open, I'm going to minimize how much time I spend there. What I was doing before is the gyms opened up, I still spent two months here uh, without going to the gym, and after two months, I started going back to the gym, but I, I would only go on the weekends, so I would stream Monday to Friday, and then... Uh, or Monday to Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would hit the gym and I'd lift really heavy. And what happened is I beat my body up so hard that uh, Mondays were arm days because I couldn't do anything else. Um, I was doing, uh, I was doing like uh, assisted squat where I had 810 pounds on my shoulders and uh, leaving like these big marks on my shoulders after. It essentially turns into a leg press and a hip thrust. Um, or, or I do the cables and I, I really tax uh, myself to the point where I'm cramping up the next day. And if I was going to the gym every, uh, every day, I would train hard enough that I would recover so I could I train the same muscle group at least twice a week. But because I was only going to the gym Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was training hard enough that uh, like my legs wouldn't recover for a full week. And so I was... I wasn't overtraining, but I wasn't training efficiently. It would, it would have been more efficient to train legs twice a week, um, but I was training as hard as I could, as, as efficiently as I could for doing one leg workout a week. Um, what made me decide to work out was the same reason most other people started to work out is I was in university, it was my last semester, and in six months, I gained 25 pounds belly fat. And I was skinny my whole life, all the guys in my family are, are overweight, and I didn't want to be overweight. So the first thing I did is I spoke to the nutritionist, I did a bunch of research, and I went for a walk an hour a day, I drank only water, and I purged my diet to all whole foods that I cooked myself, lots of vegetables, a little bit of meat, <clears throat> and in three to four weeks, I burnt off all that body, all that belly fat. I burnt it all off, I was right back to where I started. And then, having done all that research, and um, it naturally takes you to the uh, resistance training aspect of it. So I went, grabbed a pair of dumbbells at home, started lifting weights. I became a twig with arms. Like I, I, I had really big arms, still a, still a, still a twig. Uh, Cause I was training arms every day. Uh, then uh, I went to the gym. And I started filling out, got the D, got uh, better legs, built my chest up. Um, I have done bulking in the past. Uh, I've I've done a dirty bulk before. I'll never do a dirty bulk again. It's uh, like all, all that weight you put on, you gotta you gotta burn off, and you have to suffer to do so. And it's unnecessary, and it's just like you, you just don't feel good. For me, I 
my thing was always I wanted to be fit, I wanted to be healthy, I wanted to be uh, able to like outperform the the guy beside me. And no matter what it was, if it was playing basketball, if it was playing uh, football, if it was playing badminton, um, yeah, I don't post that. I'm going to make that disappear. I don't want to look at that while I'm working out. Didn't ban the guy. If he comes back in 10 minutes and he's still uh, doing it, then... Uh, Yeah. Yeah, because like for myself, I've had people be mean to me on here, but I don't care. Um, you can't hurt my feelings. But once people, like once it gets to the point where people are upsetting other people, then that's the point where I'll step in and be like, okay, that's going to stop. Uh, when when uh, my streams first started, I, I spent no time at all moderating, and that was mostly because I, I didn't know how, and uh, I, I just started streaming. I didn't, I didn't do any, I didn't look up any of the settings. I just, I watched a, a 10 minute YouTube video, and then I started streaming. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, but, but, but by and large, it's uh, it hasn't right. Like I like I'm, I'm happy just to have one person here, like like, like you, just to chat, to, just to chat with, uh, like just just a couple of people to talk to. And uh, here's it. Adam B, how's it going? All right, I'm gonna do this for squats. I've been moving all day. I've been lifting boxes up and down stairs. My new place is on a, it's a two bedroom apartment on the third floor of the building. It's got a, it's really big. It's got a um, balcony. It's got a fireplace. I'm going to have a workout room now. So uh, rather than having to work in my living room, I'm actually going to have a, have a room that I can um, go in. So I'm excited for that. And the plan is, is, uh, Save up money for a couple of years and then buy a house. Like I, I almost have enough to make a down payment now, but that felt good. Like that was, I, I like that. That one felt a little less good. Nice and slow on the way down. Really resist the weight. I wish I had the fan on me though. I'm not even go. I'm not gonna go anywhere near near failure today. If I start going near failure, I'm gonna be uh, worn out. And as soon as I've done this workout, I'm packing up all my weights except for 150 pounds, 125 pounds, 100 something like that. I'm taking everything else out of here right away. 
All right. Thanks for coming by. Go enjoy yourself. Quick question. Um, when you just start working out, you'll be like, you'll, you'll, you might shock your body. Um, and that could be, that can happen to people who have worked out for a long time, but suddenly start to switch up their training routine. Uh, particularly, uh, it happened to me before where I was lifting, but, uh, um, I wasn't really focusing on my calves and then I started going calf heavy. And as soon as I did it, it's shocked. It's, it's, it's always like two days later, but, uh, the muscle is just, uh, doesn't know what's happening. It tries to protect itself. It's like, like, like that, like it, it, it like turtles up in its own shell. I'm going to turn on my music cause I can't hear myself think. Um, but, uh, when you're starting out, you don't have to train really hard. Um, cause if you, if you're sore out there, if you, if you wear yourself down, if you injure, your, injure yourself, you're going to stop training. Whereas if you just focus on uh, making it fun and uh, not and, and, and being comfortable after, you're going to go back and do it again week after week. And then as you build a stronger base, you know, you're not going to be able to use that base to lift heavier weights, to push yourself a little bit harder. You're going to get conditioned for whatever exercises you're putting yourself under. Right? And uh, like, like the biceps themselves, the biceps aren't that big of a muscle. And like you, you think, oh, I want to work out, so what am I going to do? I'm going to do biceps. But often you know, you're just doing too much volume. Whereas uh, to be like the most efficient way to train, you don't need arm days. You don't need bicep days. So, like we're, we're, you train your biceps in isolation at the end of some at some at the end of some other workouts. So you put like 10 minutes in the biceps, and then you're and, and, then, and then you move on. Um. One thing that you can always do that will only help you is like move within whatever range of motion you have without pain. Um, there's like a lot of things can happen where something might tighten up to protect itself. And if you loosen it up, like if you get a massage or if you do some certain stretching, you can actually like, this is, this is what you're feeling, but that's not the issue. This thing is protecting another issue that by getting rid of the protection, then uh, you, can, you can cause further damage to whatever your real issue is. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend a lot of things without, because I, I, without actually being able to see you, it's better to speak to a physiotherapist. But one thing you'll never go wrong is like just moving within the range of motion you can uh, without, and if there's any pain, so stop. Like if, if I have like shoulder pain, right? Like I, I can come all the way up, but say I'm coming here, it's like, oh, this is where, if this is where it wants to stop. I feel like there's an impingement here. Like don't, don't force it, just, just, just move where, where you can. Let, let, let the body move, pump, pump some blood through the area. Um, and what, what, like, like in the future, like say you're doing a leg day. If, you, if, if you're going to be sore after your leg day, um, have the delayed onset muscle soreness, what you can do is the next day, like two, 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 two times a day for like five, 10 minutes, just go on the bike and don't go hard. Don't need tire resistance, but just, just get your legs moving. And what you're doing is you're just pumping blood through your legs and that's going to help with the recovery. And that's going to help prevent you from, uh, from stiffening up. It's going to help prevent your, your muscles from, uh, really shutting down like that. Um, your biceps sore when I went like exercise, you can do, Light exercise might help, but don't push it, right? If, it, if it's sore, don't push it. Um, you can grab like a really light dumbbell and just go through the motions and just like, like even without any weight, just, just like, like as soon as you start twisting your arm, the bicep starts to flex and just, just, just get the muscle moving a little bit. If, it, if it's, if it's tight, it's, it's, you, you can get it moving and that's going to help. It's going to. Get blood to the area. Blood is what's uh, going to take everything it needs to, to rebuild itself, to recover. But uh, the goal is, is to live a healthy, active lifestyle. And you can't do that when you're injured. Um, and 
even if you're not injured, it's a lot harder to consistently do it if you're making yourself miserable or if you're not enjoying uh, or, if you're, or if you have like different side effects, right? You want you want to set yourself up for success by building road building the road ahead of you and uh, tailing your workout to what you enjoy. Um, you want you want to build more muscle, you like the, the the back, the chest, the legs, those and the shoulders. Those are big muscle groups, and you can uh, get a lot of size for less work than you would for the bicep. For some, for a small muscle like the bicep, um, it's just it's just not going to grow in the same magnitude as as uh, as other parts of the body. So, so when you're starting out, if you focus on like back, chest, legs, and put a program in around around those, and, and pick exercises that you enjoy, you pick sets and rep ranges that uh, that, that you enjoy, and uh, just be consistent with it. That, that's where you'll, you'll you'll start to see regular results. All right. I turned my music down, now, now I regret it. Okay, so I would never recommend doing a dirty bulk. If you want to bulk up, it's not, it just takes consistent eating and if you eat more dirty type foods uh you can pack in a lot of calories if, if you add more sauces like you, you, you can have a salad where you put in a little bit of sauce and you have like three times more calories in the sauce in the, in the salad so if you're making your meals with lots of this high calorie sauce you're going to be more and, and this is food that doesn't fill you up right like the sauces you can you can you can guzzle that uh, put as much as you want on a sauce and, and like sauce or put as much as you want on the food and the sauce isn't gonna isn't gonna uh, satisfy you isn't gonna satisfy your hunger um, so if, if, if you're bulking on whole foods and you are not gaining the weight you want to throw in some more gravy on your on your meat throw in like like there, there's a lot you can do um, a lot of healthy foods most people don't realize that they're only really healthy in small proportions. Uh, like take peanuts, for example. Peanuts, very healthy, but a serving of peanuts is like half a handful. Um, where uh, like one pound of peanuts is 1.5, like 1.5 thousand calories. And most people can just eat uh, a pound of peanuts and they're, 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 they might feel a bit full, but that's not gonna hold them off for very long and they're gonna eat uh, later in the day. Um, but if you, you you start off skinny and you want to get ripped, if you focus on bulking, you will be able to gain bigger muscle mass quicker, but you're going to stop being lean. The faster you gain weight, the less of that is actually going to be muscle tissue. Um, a, a better way is just to be in a small calorie surplus. And then consistently, uh, like, like when we start training, when, when your appetite's bigger, eat when you're hungry. And uh, if, if, if you want to gain more weight, eat until you're full. If you want to gain less, just eat until you're not hungry anymore. Um, but uh, I, I've, I've got uh, fog brain right now. I've been I've been moving uh, for like dealing like moving and cleaning for about 14 hours a day, and then coming on here and working out for two hours, and I'm just. Uh, I'm sort, of, I'm sort of running around in circles here. But what, what I would recommend is um, you're starting out, you're starting out skinny, focus on the resistance training, focus on the, the program you have where um, when you're starting out, the, the program doesn't matter as much. 
It's 90% just showing up and trying hard, like, like, like really putting in a good effort. Um, and you should be focusing more on the individual exercise themselves. Learn how to isolate the bicep. When you do bicep curls, learn how to like, like try how, how to keep everything in the right place. Learn how to have a neutral spine, protect your spine when you, when, when you squat. Um, as, as opposed to like, oh, let's do this exercise. And then it's your exercise is like, okay, now I gotta do this much pulling, this much, this much, this, this much, that. Like, you, it's better to focus on the exercises themselves to start. And you're going to prevent yourself from getting injured. You're going to be able to keep training for longer. And then it just comes down to consistency. And there is no amount of metabolism that can, that can override eating. The person in the world who has the highest metabolism is actually the fattest person in the whole world. It takes more energy to pump blood through their body. It takes more energy to pick themselves. They burn more calories just getting up. Like every step, they're actually carrying all that weight. Like, like when, when you're stepping, uh, I'm 190 pounds. Every time I'm stepping, I'm moving 190 pounds. Um, and when it comes to weight loss or weight gain, it comes down to calories in, calories out. It's the laws of thermodynamics. Um, to, to optimally build muscle, you only need to be at a 300 calorie surplus over your metabolism. Uh, muscle, so, so like 300 calories is going to building your muscle, uh, whereas uh, the rest is all maintenance and uh, like healthy body functions. Um, whereas uh, you go over that, you can build a little bit more muscle, but you're, you're going to have more fat on yourself as well. And then when you have that fat on, when you go cut that fat off, you're going to lose muscle as well. Like all the extra muscle you would have gained from bulking a little bit heavier and push and, and lifting more weight, you're going to lose that once uh, once you start cutting. And the faster you cut, the faster you're, you're going to lose muscle. If you're losing more than half a pound to a pound of fat a week, there's going to be some muscle loss in there as well. Like, or not, not If you're losing half a pound to one pound of weight a week, there's going to be some uh, muscle loss in there as well. But uh, you, you, you can stay lean while building muscle. It's just, uh, you're going to see most of your growth in the first year or so. Uh, and then it's going to taper off after two years. If you were consistently pushing yourself, like as, as you get stronger, you have to lift more weight. You have to push yourself harder to lift those more weights in order to, in order to build the, to build the muscle. And, and, uh, Hypertrophy is the is, is what builds muscle. So you need to essentially take your muscles near failure. You, you need to push yourself hard enough that uh, you're getting relatively close to failure, as just just like you're, you're trying hard. And the way the muscles think is that you like like I, the muscles have this task in front of them that you've given them, and they are almost strong enough like they're almost able to easily do it but not quite uh so what they'll do is they'll tear themselves down and they'll say okay so i'm going to build myself back up and then next time i'm going to be just a little bit stronger so i, I can i can do that uh I, I can perform the task if you completely blow it like like give them a task that's way above them uh, they're not gonna think like they're, they're not gonna think like i, I Go a little bit, go, go a little bit, and I'll be able to do it. They're, they're going to be like, you're going to tear yourself down. Um, the same thing is if you're uh, not pushing yourself. Like, say you have a lightweight, and you just, you can do this, you can do this like 200 times. Um, if you're not going to failure at 200, and say you do 200, you can maybe do like 250. You're, you're not going to build any, mu any more muscle that way. What you'll do is you'll maintain what you have. Um, supplements. Most of them are not, uh, not effective. Um, you get most of what you need through food, and supplements are just that, supplements. If you have a good diet, you're way ahead on the, on, on the road to where you want to be. But the whey protein isolate, uh, that, that essentially bombards your, make sure that your muscles have protein when it needs them. That's like a, like a, it's, it's not uh, something you eat throughout the day. It's something that you have it now, and then it's there, and then it goes in and out, and it's a good post-workout. Um, 
your muscles need protein to grow, but they don't need as much as you think they do. It's not hard to get enough of protein. If you have a like, couple of meals a day and you have a little bit of meat with every meal, you're going to have enough protein. Uh, the, the, the other one that works besides the, the protein powder is the creatine. I, I've never actually taken creatine, but it does work. What it does is essentially has more, you keep, you keep more fluid in your body and, and, and in and around your muscles, and you're able to get a couple more reps. So, like, say um, you're lifting a weight, and without creatine, you can only do 10 reps before you have to stop because your muscles fatigue. Well, on creatine, you might be able to do 12. And then once you stop taking creatine, you're gonna go back down to 10, but you're gonna keep the, the extra muscle gains you've gotten from putting in that extra volume. Because like you need hypertrophy in order to stimulate the muscles to grow, and then you need a lot of volume of it to, 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 to actually grow. So it's like over, over a month, over six months, over a year, how many pull-ups did you do? Like, like how, how, many, how much of this hypertrophy training how many sets, how many reps did you get? And that's what's gonna determine how, how big you grow. And um, if you want a muscle group to grow optimally, you have to be training it two to three times a week. The science doesn't know whether it's two, whether it's three times a week. That comes down to recovery. It, it comes down to how hard you're training. Cause like you should not be training if you haven't recovered yet. And it's, you, it's not to say that you can't, it's not to say that you can't build muscle while training, while not fully recovered, it's just not gonna be as efficient. It's not gonna be as optimal. You're not gonna have as much um, um, growth as you would otherwise. Um, so, so for my daily eating routine, um, I'm eating around 2,800 calories a day right now. And it's all in low calorie, high filling foods. So I, I'm eating a lot of volume of food but it's only 2,800 calories. If I were to eat this uh, in, in more, like if I was eating more rice and this and that, and, and that switch out the switch out the egg, egg whites for, for whole eggs and, and this and that, I would, I would be at 4,000 calories. So I, I'm eating about like a portion size of like 4,000 calories, but it's only 2,800 calories because uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep myself in like uh, maintenance or, or right around uh, maybe a small calorie deficit or whatever my muscles need to, like I'm just trying to maybe build a little bit more muscle, lean out a little bit, but right now I'm more maintaining in preparation of this year. I want to lean out and get like stage ready for, for bodybuilding. Like I'm not going to actually do a bodybuilding competition, but I want to get stage ready. So right now I last, I last uh, checked myself. I'm at 11% body fat. And, uh, I plan to get down to five to seven percent. Uh, take a bunch of pictures and then, and then go back up to around eleven percent to move on with my life. Um, right now, I'm having a hard time putting on a lot of bulky muscle on, just because I don't have access to the same heavy weights that I did when I was uh, when when the gyms were open. So I, I had to change how I train, and I'm, it's it's not as easy to get that volume of, of really. Uh, it's, it's not it's not as easy to really break down. Uh, the muscle tissue anymore. Yeah. Next set. I've been not talking a lot. Um, I probably took a little bit too long between that set, but really it doesn't matter. I'm uh, I'm happy to do whatever I want right now. I've been on my feet all day, lifting boxes up and downstairs, and uh, I still showed up. That's 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 ninety percent of it. It's just showing up. Showing up and the, like like it's easier if you enjoy it. It's easier if uh, you you make it uh, easy for yourself to show up. But you still got to show up. Sometimes even when you, with the best plan, you might not feel like showing up, but you should do it anyways. This this is just what I do. That's where the uh, commitment comes in. Just like this is just what I do on. Uh, Okay. Uh, what, what's what's got what's got me right now is I have some inflammation in my lower back. Uh, I full roll it out earlier, but then when I when I when I took a break and I was just standing around for so long, the inflammation was keeping back. So 
I don't want to go any heavier than this. I don't want to go to a weight where I have to stabilize my core anymore. I wish I had the fan on me. I'm really focused on going slow on the way down, but it really gasses you out. But I'm doing that because I'm not lifting so heavy right now, but this is 175 pounds. And I'm also not taking myself anywhere near failure because once I'm done working out, I've got to take my 500 pounds of weight at home. I've got to take that. I've got to take my bench. I've got to take uh, my squat rack and move everything up, uh, like down three flights of stairs across the city and then up another three flights of stairs. Oh. I think I'm almost in need of a haircut again. I'm gonna turn my music back on. Music makes every workout better. Um, I, I'm, on, I'm on a playlist that has like 600 songs on it. I don't know what's gonna come next, but uh, it's very poppy. Uh, pasta is relatively high calories. You can eat a lot of it. Um, pasta, brown rice, <clears throat> uh, for myself, I tend to stay away from pasta because uh, it's a little bit less clean, but uh, really it comes down to how much you're eating, right? So it, like my recommendation, get a scale, actually understand how much you're putting into your body and keep it consistent and see what happens, right? So if you're having 2,200 calories a day and if you're not gaining any weight, just add an extra 200 calories and then and keep it there for a couple weeks, you're not getting any weight, add another 200 calories and you're going to gain weight. But what, what happens is uh, if your values are all up and down and if you're not actually tracking what you're doing, you're not going to really know how much calories you're eating because it does not matter how many calories you eat in one day. It's how many calories you eat in a week, how many calories you eat in a month, right? So if you um, have like 3,000 calories for four, for four days straight and then, for, and then for, uh, for two days you eat nothing, right? And then, and then, and then the, the, the seventh day you eat uh, uh, regular calories, like you're, you're going to balance out to be like to be about even where... For every 500 calories that you're above your maintenance, that, that for every 500 calories more that you're consuming than you are outputting, you're going to gain about a pound a week. And it's the, it's the same it's the same to the opposite of that. Where if you want to burn fat, if you're in a 500 calorie deficit, you're going to burn one pound of fat a week. Um, if you're in a higher calorie deficit, you're going to burn more. It's going to get harder and harder. To, to, to burn that weight or to burn belly fat, uh, the leaner you get, because eventually your body's going to start taking energy stores from somewhere else. Because once you get past this, like your your body, like everybody has a different amount of fat cells. Your fat cells are like these little eggs in your body that want to be half full, and uh, when they're when they're full, like when they're above half full, the hormones are supposed to start taking in, reduce your appetite, uh, so that uh, you naturally start eating, so that it becomes half full. And if you're below that, the hormones kick in, makes you uh, wanna like like it, it makes you wanna eat so that you'll you'll come back up to to balance. Um, and if you're below what your balance would be, and uh, 
you're still in a calorie deficit, it's going to try to preserve whatever fat you have left in the stores for um, like so such you don't die. Your body thinks like, oh my god, I need to preserve this for winter or for for uh, for a, a drought or whatever it is, and it'll start breaking down everything else in your body for storage and keeping or for energy and keeping the fat stores. But uh, for myself, I, I, brown rice is my go-to. But my recommendation, when it comes to stuff like vegetables, have as much vegetables as you want, have as much um, like egg whites as you want, like like the, the stuff that's not very much calories, you can, buy, you, can, you can eat a lot of volume and never be full. Or it takes a lot, lot, lot of volume to get full. But when it comes to pasta, measure your pasta, measure your rice, because if you, like one cup or two cups of, of rice, that's that's a lot of calories. There's, there's a, and uh, you can easily you can easily uh, bulk way more than you intend to by going a little bit overboard with the pasta. Fruit is great. Fruit is great for staying lean while building muscle. Um, it doesn't matter that it has sucrose. Um, like, there's better fruits than others. Strawberries, one pound of strawberries is 150 calories, right? And earlier I was saying, like, peanuts, one pound of peanuts is 1,500 calories. Well, one pound of strawberries is 150 calories. You eat them both, they're, they're, you're going to be likely more full on the strawberries just because they're more filling because they have fiber. Um, so, so, so the king for fruit, um, strawberries, blueberries, star fruit, and for fourth, any type of melon, right? Like, like watermelon, like, like any type of melon. It's uh, you, if if you're uh, hungry and you're worried about having too many calories, you can have as much fruit as you want, and you're never going to uh, gain any any fat. I was asked earlier what I ate today. I forgot to mention the fruit I had. I, I had, uh, had a bunch of fruit too today. And uh, I like I like having fruit before a workout just to have a little bit more, uh, just to have a little bit more direct energy right there. Uh, whereas if I'm going to be lifting really heavy, I'll carve up. Like uh, I'll, I'll have like plenty of brown rice, potatoes, and I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll still have my meat. I'll still have uh, my my fats, like my, my good fats, and but uh, being able to carve up before a workout, that that'll give more explosive explosive energy. Um, you were asking about supplements before, I believe, right? So, where's that the other guy? Who is asking about supplements? Oh yeah, so you, hey Echelon, how's it going? So you also mentioned about supplements. I, I didn't mention about pre-workouts, okay? Pre-workouts are set, are only are pretty much just caffeine. That, that, they, they market themselves as a pre-workout. They're capsine, uh, caffeine cap, uh, caplets. And you can actually get more like effective just regular caffeine pills and, and they're a whole lot cheaper. Like as opposed to like you get like a whole jar full of them for a couple bucks, um, but you can you can overdose on on that stuff really really easy. Most people I think it's like 300 milligrams in a day, and you're at the point where you're gonna you start to do damage to yourself. Um, you don't you don't need that much caffeine, but what the pre workouts do is the caffeine it gives you more like jittery energy. You're more ready to try hard because you're more ready. You have that like that 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 energy build up where you're just like. Oh, like jabba, 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 jabba. Okay, let's lift. Okay, let's go over here. Let's do this. Let's let's do this. Right? That, that, that's the energy it gives you. Hey, D, how's it going? What song do I listen to? Ed, Ed Sheeran. All right, so he's got the... Well, chicken, 
Um, see, eggs themselves have a lot of calories. If, if you're not gaining enough weight, you can have a couple more eggs and you'll, like the yolk is very rich. That's, uh, that's what the animals go through in the wild to survive. Like one little egg and that keeps them going for a long time. Whereas egg whites are more filling and, uh, and very, very low in cal very low in calories. Um, but, uh, for myself, I'm fortunate in that I could eat chicken, broccoli and rice for months at a time and not, and, and, and actually be satisfied. Like some people like can't stand certain diets and you don't need to be on chicken, broccoli and rice. You could be on more fun type diets as long as you understand how many calories you're eating or how many calories you're consuming and how much protein you're getting, right? So, so people will talk about their macros. Macros don't really matter as much for when it comes to building muscle. You can build more muscle on a high fat diet, a high carb, a high carb diet, a high protein diet. You just need enough protein to uh, support the muscles. And then it just comes down to, uh, to calories. You need, you need like 300 calories uh, a day, which is like, no, nobody can even measure 300 calories. Your, your appetite is actually going to take, take care of that for you. Well, feel free to work. I'm happy to have you here. I, I feel good. I'm, I've, I've got uh, workout. I, I've, I've got the uh, moving brain where my brain has been fatigued for three days. Um, Thursday, I, I, I end up showing up at work uh, for the morning, and I end up spending 14 hours on my feet that day. Uh, I, I went to my new place. It was supposed to be clean. And uh, they hadn't cleaned it, so I had, I was cleaning till like 10, 10 11 o'clock at night. I got home and did a two-hour workout after being on my feet for 14 hours. Then uh, I woke I woke I, I went to bed at 1:30 in the morning. Woke at five in the morning. I went again till about 11 o'clock with, without like going nonstop. I did my cooking the last time I'm ever going to cook here, and then I worked out again for two hours. And then I woke up today. I started at about 10 a.m. and so I've been going from 10 till about 8 p.m. And then uh, I went and I took a half an hour walk and, and then I showed up here. So I, I've been going, going, and I, like, my body's, I, I'm proud of myself. I feel like I've accomplished something. It's been very, very rewarding just being out and about, right? Like when you're sitting at home all the time, you, like you don't know, you don't necessarily know what you're, you don't necessarily feel what you're missing if you're not, if you just go outside, right? Like, like when you're inside for a while, you go outside, it's like, ah. And so I was, so it was, it was, it's been rewarding, but my, my brain is a little bit tired. Trick monkey. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to clean it. I was supposed to go in there. It was supposed to be all clean and livable. But, uh, um, the people that they hired to clean it, especially spent, essentially spent three hours in there and did nothing. So it was like, it was like. Well, I spent like five hours cleaning. I had to clean every baseboard. I had like, cause, cause the, they just did a bunch of construction in the place. So it still has like that new paint smell. Um, it's like they replaced the, the kitchen countertops. They replaced like the, the bathroom. There, there's so much work done on it. They had to clean it up, but they didn't. And the nastiest part was the kitchen. Um, like they, they had never cleaned behind the kitchen in years, like or behind the, uh, behind the fridge in years. So I was, and I, I was making it to a place where I'd like to live, and, but, and and just that, like like losing my Thursday, put me put me behind. I, I had a plan: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I, well, I wasn't gonna have to work very hard. But losing a whole day, suddenly it's uh, I'm tight on time, and everything you see in here is everything I have left, except for what's in my fridge and what's in, in my in my plates and stuff. So. Everything else in my apartment is gone right now. And as soon as I've done this workout, I'm going to take my squat rack, my bench press, and all my weights, except for what I need for tomorrow for weighted pull-ups. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to take it down three flights of stairs, across the city, up three flights of stairs. And then tomorrow, I'm going to be cleaning this place. So I'm going to clean this place spotless. And then uh, once I'm done, I'm going to do a weighted pull-up uh, stream and then that will be it 
for here, I'll probably take Monday, Tuesday off, and then start working out again uh, Wednesday. Like, I'm so tired, I can't remember, like, Monday, Tuesday, what's after, what's after Tuesday? Is it Thursday? No, it's, it's Wednesday. Um, so Wednesday, uh, hopefully I'll have my setup. I'm going to have a, a room to work out in. Um, I'm not sure how big it is. Like, the room itself is probably like this, I think. So what I'm hoping is that I can set the camera up so I can be on the stream where you can see my head and you can see my feet so I can do deadlifts. I still plan to do some deadlifts today. So I'm going to do one more set of this. Then I'm going to do some deadlifts. Then I'm going to do some isolation on my quad, my hamstrings, and then my calves. And that's uh, now we get to my workout. And then right away, I'll start moving. Well, th this is my apartment that uh, I'm now moving out of. So uh, it's been uh, it's been home for a while. And honestly, I typically don't spend a lot of time at home. For the last nine years, I've been trying to pick up as many pastimes as I can and. Uh, always, I'm always being active. I'm always cooking. I'm always like, I, like back when I could do part of dancing, I, like I do part of dancing every day of the week if I could, but my my body can't handle it. It's too hard on the knees eventually. Like like when you're part of dancing, you're often you're often spinning, and when you're spinning, you're actually putting a lot of torque on the knee. So you're torquing the knee, and you have to resist. And uh, like just a lot of a lot of constant on, on one knee, and uh, partner dancing has worn me out more than lifting ever has. I've never like tore my body down with the weights before. It's always been my extracurricular activities, whether that's uh, badminton, whether it's partner dancing. And it wasn't until the pandemic that I actually started to spend more time at home. But even then, when the pandemic first hit, I spent all my time outside. So. Uh, uh, there's a lot of area here where I can go, and I'm the, I'm the only person outside. And uh, or and there's only people you'll see, but uh, you're all spread far in between. I love to come down. Uh, how, how's that? How's that dance go? Or they're like, oh, I'm, I didn't like that. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Uh... Uh, it was funny, so it was worth it, but. I can feel everything from here down. I, I have a little bit of inflammation. Um, I've, I've earned myself a couple days rest. But before, uh, before 2018, I, I would often put myself through this for work, where I would have to drive up to like, like six hours to a small community up north, and I'd, I'd, I'd be there for a week, and I'd be working 12 to 14 hours a day, running around, carrying equipment, lifting stuff, doing, doing whatever I had to get done to get the job done. And then I'd drive back, and uh, like, like sun up to sun down, just like I would attack, and I'd attack, and I'd attack, and I'd attack, and then I'd get back to the hotel, and I'd lift my weights. And then, or uh, or uh, the same thing, like if I, was, if I was in the city, I'd get home, I'd still go to the gym. Like I would, like, I would spend my... I would spend all day walking up and down riverbanks, like up and down, up and down, up and down riverbanks, and then go lift some weights. And every time, you just like, like you're, you're like, at, at some point in time, your brain shuts off and your body just does the work. But uh, it's always, it's always been a sense of accomplishment. All right, next set. This will be my last. 
squat here. And then uh, I can pretty much just put it on the floor. And then just start, actually, no, I'm going to put it on the floor. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put a ton of weight up here because then I got to take it off. <sighs> yeah, I'm uh, getting a little bit nostalgic thinking about leaving here. All right, so I want to be done my workout in, in like half an hour. I'm all over the place. This thing's awkward on my back right now. All right, I'm done. I'm done with my squats. I've gotten good at re racking the weights. This has got a very swing dance type of feel to it.
I think that was the first swing dancing song that I heard play in a long time. Even before bed doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, depends on uh, what your goals are. Like uh, you get the strong men, people who just want to put on as much weight as possible. You got to eat. And the best way to do that is to spread out your meals so you're constantly eating. And that includes right before bed. I was having five to 6,000 calories a day for three years. And to do that, I have my last meal around midnight. I go to bed absolutely full. I wake up at 5.30 in the morning, still full, just to eat some more. But uh, what can happen, though, is uh, you, know, you might mess with your digestion a bit if you're eating a large meal right before bed. But uh, if you don't have any underlying issues, like eating before, eating before bed isn't a problem. Okay, it, it comes down to how many calories you're eating. Now, that, that's, that's actually all that matters. It doesn't matter when you eat those calories. If you can eat those calories first thing in the morning and then uh, eat nothing else for the rest of the day, if you have 2,000 calories in the morning, eat nothing else for the rest of the day, um, that's a, the, the same for the body as eating uh, like your regular three meals a day having 2,000 calories. Um, when you eat those calories, less matters. It's more how many calories you eat a day for a week over a month. That, that's what matters. And if you are consistently eating more calories than you're burning, you're, you're going to gain weight. And if it's too high, it's going to, uh, whatever the muscles don't use, it's going to go straight to fat. It's, li it's literally the laws of thermodynamics. Energy in versus energy out. <clears throat> and when you have more energy coming in, where does all that extra energy go? It gets stored. Where does it get stored? It gets stored in your fat. And, and vice versa, if you have energy coming in, less energy coming in than the energy coming out, right? There's some part of you that's gonna have to come, that's gonna have to go out. And that's gonna come from your energy stores, which are from your fat and maybe a little bit from actually your your muscle tissue, from from other parts that make you up. Um, I had one other thing there. Let me think of what I was going to say. Um, so, oh, I had I had one more point, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah, when, when you're first starting out. If you're going to the gym every day, you got to be really careful about, burn, about burnout. What's more likely that's going to happen is going every day, you're just not going to work as hard every day. Um, and uh, without pushing yourself, you're going to plateau. Um, but, but at the same time, if you're pushing yourself hard every day for an hour and two hours, that's too much and your body's not going to recover. If you don't recover, you're not building muscle. It cut, like you need, you need a hypertrophy to break down the muscle tissue, and then you, need, then you need rest for the muscle tissue to rebuild. That's how you build muscle. But there's one other thing that really makes really brought it all together. But I don't remember. Um, uh, it comes down to what you need to recover. Um, I, I, I'd recommend even like. If, if you start off like three like like start starting off like three days a week and then as you build a better base then you can build in four then you can build in five um, you're gonna have to figure out what you what you're capable of because um, for me it took me about a year it took me about a year of training hard before I could train hard actually it took me longer it took me it took me like a year and a half 
before I could train hard for five days or for six days of the week. I would train five days on, one day off. Five days on, one day off. But I would train hard for five days. So I, I would, I would, and I, I, I like trained as hard as I could, and I was always managing my recovery. So I get to the gym, it's like, like, oh, my chest is still bit tender. My chest, okay, so I'm not ready. I'm not, I'm not ready to train chest yet. But uh, what, what's, what's, what, what can I train today? Okay, let's do this. Whereas then the next day I was like, okay, my chest is recovered. Let's do my chest. So I literally, I had my chest workout. I broke it down. So three days later, I'm able to train chest again. And as soon as I'm able to train it, I trained it again. And for, for, for myself, I find it very easy to put a lot of volume in the chest. So I, I have a, I have an easy time building muscle in my chest. Oh yeah, and another thing is uh, like if if you if you have some fat, if you want to burn it, you don't get to choose where it comes from. People want to lose their their stomach around their their belly, at least, at least men, right? When women tend to hold more of their fat in, in their legs, but when you start losing fat, it's going to come from all over, and it's likely the last place it's going to come is uh, is is the, is the stomach. Um, well, that that's not true. Like the last place is like in the back. Like like back fat is uh, the hardest fat to get rid of. But uh, what you can expect is within certain body fat percentages to have certain body, to have a certain look based off of how much muscle you have and how tall you are. Whereas, uh, like, it's, it's disheartening for women because a lot of women want the hourglass figure, and so they start uh, going on a diet, and the first place they start losing weight, like they start losing fat, is actually from their chest. So, they, so their so their chest actually starts shrinking, and that's and that's very disheartening because that's the last thing they want, right? Like they came here for the, for the opposite of that. All right, I'm gonna take the weight down. Um, I gotta make sure I take it down evenly or else uh, I'll end up tipping the whole thing. I'm just, I'm still thinking about what I forgot, what, what I wanted to see and I forgot. It's going to bother me right until I remember. Okay, that, I still have to move a little bit. Scared me. Wait, why am I taking this off? I don't want to take this off. Yeah, and another thing with uh, when it comes to working out, I've, I've said this already, but it's it's consistency and it's showing up. That's like 90% of it. Um, what happens with a lot of people is they get lost in the semantics. They get lost in things that don't really matter as much. Uh, when it comes to building muscle, like it just comes down to like you, like just try harder than try harder than the than the workout before. Always keep pushing yourself. Meanwhile, like how many reps, how many sets, how many, like, should I follow more bodybuilder versus, versus strength training versus Olympic lifting? What, what type of, uh, like, like people, people get lost in that and they get stuck in things that matter. Like, like people are like, how much protein should I, like, should, so, so, like, should I have, how many protein powders should I get? How many supplements should I have? But, uh, if you're not showing up every day, if you're not lifting heavier and heavier weights, But uh, diet, on the other hand, is its own is, is its own beast, and you don't need to bulk to build muscle. That's uh, a misconception, even by professional bodybuilders. But what? Well, actually, sorry, you don't you don't need to bulk to build muscle. But if you do bulk, you will build muscle, but you're not going to be lean. If you want to be lean. And have muscle, you don't need to bulk. If you if you if you don't care if you have a belly, if you just want to be strong, um, and there's also misconceptions that happen with uh, you get people that are really large, and they might not necessarily have more muscle, like they, they could have more muscle because they lift heavy weights, but 
But at the same time, um, there's a couple other things that go on besides just the muscle. One, when you're heavier, you have more mass. Mass moves mass. If you're if you're doing a deadlift, if, if you weigh like 300 pounds, if you start to lean back, your your own weight is going to almost lift the weight up a little bit. Uh, another thing that happens is as you get more bulkier, you become stiffer. And the stiffer you are, um, that the stiffness in the joints is going to help you lift the weights. Another thing that happens is you lose your range of motion. If you're doing a bench press, like for myself, I can get all the way here, right? Well, if you have a bigger chest, maybe you're only getting the bar here, right? So this is a lot easier. You can lift like twice as much weight doing this as opposed to this, right? This is a lot, a lot harder. And uh, like what I'm doing right now, I'm doing deadlifts, but this is low bar deadlifts. This is a standard weight, so they're closer to the ground. It makes the exercise a whole lot harder. And it, makes, it changes the whole exercise. So I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time thinking about this so I don't hurt myself. I'm, I'm normally, like, I'm built for a deadlift, but I'm used to the normal deadlift. And when, when you lower the bar just by a couple inches, it changes the whole exercise. Like, it, it's like, like completely foreign, like, you don't even know how to lift it. But, uh, yeah, rest days are important. My preferred training program like push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, with rest days in between the, the program where you need them. So maybe push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, rest, or maybe push, pull, legs, one rest, push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, rest. It, uh, it really comes down to how much you're recovering. And I, I don't know what, that, what that's going to, going to be for you to be the most efficient. But uh, if you start getting, it's like you can train so hard that you trash your that you trash your immune system. And I, I, I've done that where I was training so hard that I had this I, I had like a, a little cough and sniffles for over a year straight. So for for a year I was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> and I, 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 I and that's just because I was training so hard I had a little bit of a drip down my throat because my because I was barely recovering. So. My muscles were recovering, but my immune system was absolutely tanked. And then I spent a lot of time partner dancing, and in partner dancing, sometimes you're chest to chest with somebody else, and so you're getting all their bacteria. Meanwhile, if you have a compromised immune system, that's a recipe for catching this, catching that. Um, just like uh, the UFC fighters, right? When when somebody is going in for a fight, they they'll go through a camp where they have an X number of weeks to prepare for this fight. And they are sick the whole time. They work themselves, like they're training hours and hours and hours and hours. And they are absolutely, and they're, they're like sick. They got like, everybody there's got a runny nose and has a cold. And then so you're you're rolling on the mat with other people who are, who are training hard enough to have a runny nose and cold. And... Yeah, when it's low like this, I have to come a little more forward on top of the weight. I'm supposed to be able to grab it here. I gotta roll a little bit closer so I can actually grab it because it's so low. All right, I'm gonna add some, add some weight. One thing you got going for you is there's a lot more high quality information out there these days than there was when I first started working out. 
Um, there's still like, tons of crap out there. Like, there's a lot of, for, for every good piece of advice you get, um, you, you have people selling you uh, something that you don't need. Right? Like, or, or whenever somebody says, like, oh, my, my 10 minute workout that's going to change your life, they're, they're basically lying to you. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Like, like, even when they look, like the person looks really, really good, their workout isn't how they, they got to looking the way that they do. Like, not intensive is diet. And really, with diet, all it matters, calories, get enough protein. Learn how many calories you're actually consuming, and keep your, like, like for myself, I like using my body as a science experiment, where what I would do, I would keep all the factors the same, I would, I would, I would keep every factor the same, and I, I'd, I'd stick with it for a while, and I'd change one thing out of, out of all my, out of all my factors. I'd, I'd manipulate one factor, and then I'd, I'd, I'd observe the changes in my body, and then, uh, okay, so, and then see what that does. And I'll play with another factor, but only that factor, and then see what that does to my body. And well, and, uh, and, 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 you, and you can't do that if you're changing all these factors at once. Right? If, if you're just saying, oh, I'm just going to eat eggs and this and that, and it's like, okay, well, how many calories are you really eating? And, like, like some days you might be eating a lot, some days you might not be. And most people who are thin, it's not actually because they have a really high metabolism. It's just they're not eating as much. Like, like they might they might be able to eat a really big meal. So they like, okay, I can show off. Look, I mean, look all this food I've ate. Yeah. So you, you ate uh, 1,500 calories in one meal, and then the rest of the day you didn't really eat anything. Or maybe one day you had 3,000 calories, but the rest of the week you had 1,200 1,200 calories. You ate half as much, and so you balance it out over the week, and that's uh, okay. So so you're 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 only having uh, like 1,800, 100 calories a day. That's not uh, a ton of food. Yeah, like, when, when, when I want to gain weight, I know how to gain weight. It just comes down to eating. Anybody can gain weight. Um, but what, what you want, though, is you want to gain good quality weight. And, uh, like, if you want to gain weight, you just got to eat more. If you're, if you're not getting as much weight as you want, you just got to eat more. And, uh, Like, like once you're eating more than 3,000 calories a day, you're gonna have to start doing tricks in order to get the food down. Like it gets hard to get the food down, but you gotta consistently like, like, like you learn when, what to eat, when to eat, what type of meals in order, or in order so that you get more, and sort of just so you get more, more of it down. How to split your meals. Um, oh. And uh, like you, you learn the tricks, like just eating faster. Right, like you eat fast before your hunger uh, can really uh, turn off. All right, so I added some weight. Oh shit! I'm just getting ready and. Uh, I got some. I need to go good. I don't want to be here all day, so I'm just going to wrap it up again. Because now I'm at 70 pounds. So I'm at 100 and. Hold on. So this is 265 pounds now. Or will be once they put this on. So 265 pounds. And because this is a low bar, this is going to feel more like 315.
Yeah, I, I didn't notice that last time. I was just lifting it, and uh, I was like, <laughs> I, I looked at it. Why did that feel weird? And uh, but uh, when the weight's down here, I'm not really worried about it being unsafe. It's when the weight's above your head where you don't want it to. Like, like not, not even that, like if, if you're lifting and you, you just do a little bit of that once, if the weight shifts by an inch, suddenly you have more weight on one side than the other, and it just keeps pulling you more and more. I'm a rounder, how's it going? Well, nobody's ever stopped me. Um, if Twitch forced me to uh, put a shirt on when I worked out, um, I, I, I would want my family to sue them for my, once I inevitably died from over, overheating during the workout. I am a heat boss. I just give off heat. Um, I started training on Twitch in January. Um, I would open the windows, have the fan on. I would get my apartment to below zero, uh, like minus one degree Celsius or below. And within 10 minutes of working out, my place is a sauna. Like the MVP of my screen right now, is this guy here? Like I have, I'm just a heat bucket. It makes it uh, makes me uh, a good. It, it's made me a good cuddle buddy in the past. Middle of winter, doing some partner dancing, and then uh, going until like four o'clock in the morning. Everyone else is cool. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm so hot, right? So you're on the dance floor, dancing chest to chest. Yeah, so you, you want to, first there's two things. You have to be lean enough to see your abs. <clears throat> and you do that by, like, the only way to lose fat is to be in a calorie deficit. Like, there's no other way. It's the laws of thermodynamics. Like, you, you can't beat it. Energy in versus energy out. The energy that comes in, if it's higher than what's going out, um, the excess is going to be stored as energy in your body, in your fat cells. Um, whereas, uh, for the opposite, if you have more energy leaving than is coming in, then the remainder is going to come from your fat cells and that, that's where the majority is going to be. If you're in too high of a calorie deficit, it's going to break down wherever it can. It'll break down muscle tissue. It'll, you, your, your body can waste away. But, uh, for the most part, it's going to be from the fat cells until your fat cells go below a certain amount. And you don't get to choose where the fat is removed from. So when you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna lose fat from all over and maybe your stomach is gonna be the last thing to go. You can't you can't uh, like spot train your 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 belly fat. Um, and the second thing is is having muscle definition to uh, like like you can actually train your abs to be thicker but at the same time, when, when you when you do that, if you have fat over top in your stomach and you start training abs, you're, you're not going to be able to see the abs. What's going to happen is the abs are going to push out and you're going to have a bigger belly because there's going to be fat and then muscle underneath. So you're, you're going to be doing more crunches and your stomach's just going to get bigger and you're not going to see the abs. You have to lean out first and it comes down to being in a calorie deficit. If you want to be in a calorie deficit without suffering, because what it comes down to is uh, consistency and like like bad diets pretty like never work. 95% of the time somebody goes on a diet, they will go on a diet for a set amount of time, lose a bunch of weight, and then they'll go back to eating the way that they ate that got them the body that they originally didn't want. So you need to have a diet that you can see yourself continuing with for the rest of your life. And the easiest way to do that without being hungry, because hunger is the enemy, hunger is what's what's gonna keep you eating when uh and keep you in a calorie surplus, you need to eat more high filling, low calorie foods. That's um, a lot of vegetables. You get your fruits, um, egg whites, um, like switch all your sugary drinks to water. 
Um, you can switch your, sh your sugary drinks to artificial su sugar, which doesn't have as much calories, and that will be a be now, that is better than having the sugar drinks. You will lose weight, but it's, but those artificial sugars also stimulate your hunger. So you, you'll have a sweet tooth, which may make you suffer a little bit more than if you uh, just have water. Hey, how's it going, uh, Bot Lane Gap? Let me catch up on chat. All right, 200 sit-ups a day, ab workouts is like the most inefficient thing that you can do. Like it's absolutely the most, like like the, the trifecta, grab some weights and, and it doesn't matter what, just pick up some weights, do some resistance training. Um, if you want, like, like the more muscle you build, the more calories it's going to eat. So, uh, if you want to build bigger muscles faster, work on the bigger muscles themselves. Work on your chest, your back, your legs, uh, and, 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 and your shoulders, right? If you're just in there doing biceps, your biceps aren't going to grow past a certain point, especially uh, there's natural inhibitors in the body that, that prevent things from growing in excess of other things. So, like, your biceps are never going to grow past a certain point if you don't uh, train your forearms as well. Um, so, grab some weights. doesn't matter what. Just, just build some muscle. Uh, second... Um, your, your diet, more high filling, low calorie foods. Uh, don't eat until you're full, eat until you're not hungry. Um, and learn how much you're actually eating. No, most people don't actually understand what they're consuming. If you understand what you're consuming, you can just take off a little bit. And if you, if you don't start losing the, the fat, take off a little bit more. And then eventually when you keep doing that, you're going to, you're going to burn off the belly fat and you're gonna see the abs. Um, and then when you're training, like if you do a lot of compound lifts, you're gonna naturally train your core anyways. So, so you're gonna, you do squats, you do, like you do, like you do stuff where you have to tighten your core as you're lifting, you're going to build enough abs to be able to see them when you're lean. Um, and then, uh, but like 200, 200 abs, like you're training a small muscle. You're, you're not gonna build a lot of muscle that's gonna consistently eat calories. And the third thing is, is cardio. Cardio burns, like when you're weight training, Weight, like like lifting weights burns very little calories. Um, they, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like 400 pounds, you put 400 pounds on a deadlift, you lift it up one meter, you burn one calorie, um, which which is nothing. But it's it's not not easy to do, right? It's like four, lifting up 400 pounds on the ground is like man, that was so hard. It's like yeah, well you burn one end, one calorie because calorie is a, me a measure of wattage. It's a measure it's a measure measure of energy. So it's like how much wattage your body gave out. Well, you just did this and you lift it up uh some potential energy up off the ground or like kinetic or like whatever type of energy up, up, up off the ground um but cardio you're consistently burning you're consistently giving off off wattage and not high intensity cardio high intensity cardio is too hard you want to pick a cardio that you can do for an hour and be absolutely spent after an hour so like even walking like like a lot of cardio is, is very hard in the body the harder cardio you do the more like you can actually break down muscle tissue, and it's just too hard to, to be to, tr to build muscle efficiently. So like even just walking, you go walk for an hour, and you like you walk briskly, you're gonna burn 300 cal like 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 up to like 300 calories just going on a, on a walk. It depends on how much you weigh, but uh, um. You, you can do ab workouts with a gut if you like it, but it's not going to get you what you want right away. It's, it comes down to first leaning out and like like while you're doing that, you can build more muscle and that, and that muscle is going to give you more definition anyways. Um, but if all you're doing is training your gut, your, your, your gut's just going to get bigger. It's uh, counterproductive. Um, and then for drinking eggs, drinking eggs is unnecessary. Eating like... It, like all that matters is calories. Um, if you're not getting any, any nutrition, uh, your body's not going to work right. But if you're eating like whole foods, you're like throwing like you don't even have to eat all whole foods. You can eat a lot of processed foods. But if, if you're like cooking and you're um, and if, if you're just not eating fast food every day, you're going to get enough nutrition. And if you're not, uh, you just figure what you're missing. And like pota potassium, have, have a banana, right? It's uh, you need potassium because uh, that, that, that'll help uh, your muscles move along each other. And like, your muscles are constantly like, sliding along each other. 
And when they don't, that's when you get a cramp. Potassium is almost lubricated, is like the lubrication that flows between them. Make sure you drink enough water, so it's like same, same thing. Um, uh, drinking eggs is, isn't even that much protein. Like drinking straight eggs isn't, isn't that much protein. You, 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 get, you get the egg whites, you get... Um, but uh, the yolk is very high in calories. So if you're trying to stay lean, um, take the yolk out of your eggs. Eat tons of egg whites. Egg whites are very filling. You can make pancakes. You can make French toast with them. Like, like uh, what I do is, is I'll, I'll have my, my I'll, I'll make I'll put ten cups of egg whites in, in a in a bin. I'll stick my bread in there. I'll soak the bread. Stick the bread on the pan. Take a spoon. Keep dunking more egg whites onto the piece of bread until it absolutely can't soak anymore. Then take a handful of blueberries, stick those on top, fry it, flip it, and you get these French toasts that uh, go for the low calorie bread, low, low, lower that you can. Uh, so there's there's more big bread that's more porous, holds more egg whites. <clears throat> um, but you have two of those, and, and for myself, like I, I can eat three and I'm absolutely stuffed. Have some Greek yogurt on top and it, it's, it's delicious. Six foot, six foot, two hundred pounds. Um, you burn more calories when you're bigger for two reasons. One, takes more energy to pump blood through your body. Two, out like every movement you make. Um, well, at, this is generally, but every movement you take, you're moving more mass, and as you're moving more mass, you're giving off more wattage. But the problem is, is uh, some people, like, on the other hand, sometimes when you get too big, you start moving less. So there's a, there's like a point over the hill where you actually start, uh, like, like, there's still more energy to pump the blood through your body, but your, your, your body's naturally going to move less. It's, it's just uh, going to preserve, preserve itself. <clears throat> but at the same time, that's uh that's like your active like your your so your inactive metabolism like like wherever you're burning just by staying alive is going to be higher when you're uh, when you're bigger, but if you but muscle burns more calories than fat so if somebody's the same weight as another person if they've got more muscle they're going to burn more calories so like when you have two people the same weight the person who has more muscle is going to burn more calories. <clears throat> And uh, the, the last thing is, uh, what was the last thing? Yeah, and then, and then like the, often the people that are smaller, they're smaller because they're actively uh, performing. They're actively burning energy throughout the day, right? So if you do cardio, to stay lean with cardio, if you're not both on a diet, you have to do cardio every day you have to keep doing it. Like not every day, but you have to consistently do it throughout the week. <clears throat> if, if you stop doing cardio, you're going to start gaining weight. Um, but it's counterintuitive that if, if you go on a run, right, and, and you start to run, at first you can only, like, like, as it gets easier to do, you start to run faster. Um, or, or rather, you start running at the same speed. And, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll use biking instead. So, so you're on the bike, you're pedaling, and uh, when you start wherever you're, wherever you're starting, a couple weeks later, you're gonna have, like, what you did before is gonna be easier, it's gonna be too easy for you. So you're gonna go a little bit harder, you're going to push, uh, you're gonna add more resistance, and you're actually gonna burn more calories. It doesn't matter how much effort you feel like you're doing, just because it's gonna become easier, but it's gonna become easier to burn more calories. Uh, that, that, that's why my recommendation is to pick a cardio that a type of cardio that you enjoy and stick with it and get really good at the, at the, at the type of cardio. But at the same time, if uh, you get bored of cardio quickly, switch it up. Like whatever you need to do, just to yeah. Tomorrow will be uh, my pull-up day. Um, but um, at midnight my internet is switching to a new place. So I've got to get... Oh, bugger. 
So I, I have until midnight to work out. And after that, um, come on, camera. How's that? That's good enough. So I got 200 and, uh, 265 pounds on here, I believe. I can't math right now. Yeah, strawberries are great. One pound of strawberries is 150 calories. You could literally eat as many strawberries as you want, and you're never going to burn fat. Like you're, you're going to be a calorie deficit if you just eat nothing but strawberries. You're going to get sick of them before you're going to do that. And uh, but if, if you get sick of them, you're going to you're not going to stay on that diet. So that, that's not a good recommendation either. But uh, if you're going to binge, like 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 say you're on a diet, and then every so often everybody loses their uh, their uh, like like their their focus every once in a while, and if you're going to, if you have to binge right, yeah, like you you had enough time to binge, pick something that uh, like like fruit that you can eat as much as you want of, it tastes good, and uh, you eat like pounds of it and just a couple hundred calories. All right. All right. So th this bar is very low to the ground. I gotta, I, I gotta go to a regular deadlift, and I have to roll forward so I can get to the bar. Yeah. Like this feels, uh, this feels like 315 at least, but it's only 265. Let me read that chat there. Slumped a lot. Uh, my my first tip, like I'll, I'll give you three tips. Um, I'll, I'll give you a plan, which I don't normally do. One, go for a walk every day. You don't need, like, it, it, it comes down to calories in versus calories out. You need to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. That's the only way to do it. Um, and being a little bit heavier, you can be in a little bit of a bigger calorie deficit to start and lose more weight because uh, you have more weight to lose. But uh, like 1% of your body fat is going to be probably just as hard as somebody else to lose 1% of their body fat. Or 1% of your body fat is going to be, uh, might, might be like two times, three times as big as somebody else. I'm not sure. But... Uh, um, walking every day, uh, like you walk for an hour, you're going to burn 300 calories, uh, approximately, like depending on how hard you go, but it's, it's easy on the body. You're not going to wear yourself out. If even walking can be hard, right? So if you, when you walk, start off in smaller portions, maybe split it a couple times throughout the day, just go on walks. And then very quickly, your body will become conditioned to the walks and then you'll be able to walk longer, farther. Um, so you are doing your cardio. The second thing, like take out all the sugary drinks, like so drink only water if you can. Water is great for filling you up, keeping you uh, satiated, and uh, you're not going to get any excess calories. Um, and then, like most people get too many calories through their sauces, right? So if you're going to have a salad, have a salad that's like this, or like like have one plate of salad. You're still hungry. Grab a second. Grab a second thing of vegetable, like third. However much you need to be full. If you're doing that off off uh, vegetables. You're, you're on the right track. But if you have vegetables and you put uh, some sauce on it, you can have like twice as much calories in the sauce as, as is in the actual salad. Um, so first, pick up walking uh, or, or do some sort of preferred cardio. Don't, uh, wear, like, don't wear yourself down. Two, switch to water. Um, this is like, it, it's really just calorie deficit. The, the, there's other plans that will work following this, but um, pick up some weights. Uh, build some muscle. You can build muscle while in a calorie deficit if you're already a little bit heftier. Because um, uh, you, like you, can, you can build a muscle and the energy that you're going to need for the muscles will come from the fat stores. And the more muscle you build, the higher your metabolism is going to be and they're gonna, you're going to naturally 
eat more, like your, your muscles are gonna eat calories every day without having to do the, without having to do the work. Um, don't really get caught up in what type of exercise you do. If you want, work the, like work more compound lifts, chest, back, legs, focus more on the exercise, make sure you're, you're not hurting yourself, make sure that you're enjoying what you do. And then, uh, so, so last one, you need enough protein to, uh, to build muscle, but like low calorie, high filling foods, that's your, like you, you can pretty much eat only vegetables if you want, like, like only vegetables that like that, that works for, for, for losing weight, but you need to eat enough so that you're not hungry. Hunger is the enemy. Hunger is what's going to keep you, uh, eat, like keep you in an excess of eating. And that's what, that's why people get a beast in the first place is their hormones get out of whack. And uh, when the fat cells are already full, the hunger hormones are still telling me that I'm hungry, so you still want to eat. Um, so, so that's so, 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 so like, like, like a diet that's, that's high calorie, or, or high filling, low calorie foods. You got egg whites, you got fruits, you got, you got vegetables, have, have some meat, but the understand what you're eating, the higher calorie items, like rich meat, like, like meats, meats, meats are actually higher cal like, like you, you can get a little bit of steak and like, look at me, look at me, what's a serving uh, of steak? Learn, learn, learn actually how much you're eating. And if you're going to weigh your food and measure how much you're consuming, measure, focus on the, the rice, the pasta, uh, like, like the, the higher calorie items, like the peanuts. Um, all right. Well, it's, uh, I'm, I'm cheering you on. Um, oh, I wanted to get back to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, water, water is your friend. Like another, like a dirty trick, like a cheap trick you can do with, with, uh, with water, drink water before every meal and it'll just fill up your stomach a little bit more, help prevent you from eating until you're full. Like you're gonna get sat, uh, satiated sooner uh, if, if you've already, if, if, you, if your stomach's a little bit more full of water and you're still eating, so you're gonna be, you're gonna be more likely to eat until you're not hungry anymore, as opposed to overeating. Um, and then as for the, if you, if you can't do one pull up, another thing you can do, if, if you have a bar, jump up and then let yourself down slowly with the weight. Jump up, let yourself down slowly. You're gonna actually build you 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 build, you build more strength on the descent than you do lifting yourself up, and and, and you're typically about thirty percent stronger on, on the way down as opposed to lifting yourself up. So just jump and then resist the weight, jump resist the weight, and you'll find that you're a lot stronger. Okay. 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 Well, see, I, I, I don't really know how to answer that uh, volume gap. Because, like, if, if I had your body and if, 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 if I, like, know, knowing what I know and what I'm capable of, or, or, or rather, how much, able, how, much, how much I can push myself and what is actually required to do that, like, like, like three months... I, I, like three months, you could have like easily, easily within three months, you could have like paper abs, uh, a V, uh, like shredded. But uh, that, that's easier said than done, right? That, that, that's not that's not easy. And so like like and I'm saying three months is easy, like like le, le, less than three months. But I, I don't want to necessarily say that because that might not be very realistic because. You might not even be in a place in your life where you actually want to push yourself that hard. And it might be more beneficial to get there a little bit slower and, and, and enjoy the process, not burn yourself out, make sure that uh, you're going to keep, you're going to stay there afterwards, right? Like, like some, some, like don't, don't make yourself miserable, like, like for, for the end result. Like if, if you get there a little bit slower, you don't have to be miserable. To like, like your dream physique. Um, most people can't necessarily get to the dream physique, but you can get like 80% there. Um, it's, it's just, uh, like, and you don't have to be miserable if you, if you are doing it right.
Alright. So I'm done, uh... I'm done, uh... Done that. I'm gonna do some isolation exercises. extensions. I like going light to start and just getting the muscle contracting first and then very quickly you know wrap the weight. Now let's uh pull. Yeah, like you you've you've got your, your schedule written down and uh looks looks like you're keeping to it which is uh halfway there. Uh, which is setting yourself up on, on the right on the right track. Cool. But uh, if it comes down to getting that volume of hypertrophy in and without necessarily seeing you train, it's, it's, it's a little bit hard to, to tell exactly where you're at. Because most people don't even have a very good understanding of what their own, uh, what, what failure is for them, right? Because like you, you have a plan and you say, okay, I'm going to do X amount of sets of this at this weight, okay? So you, you did that weight, but uh, like say, say you're doing uh, like like 10 reps a set. Well, did you have 15 in the tank, and did you stop at 10? Right? Like like you should you should sort of get to a weight where 10 is like 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 11 is, is the max, right? And so so you get the so you get the 10. And that, that, that that's. Uh, Yeah, and like some people who are absolutely jacked, like they, they just, they just, they're just crazy people who, uh, who try, like who, who just really, like, like really exert themselves. And I, I've been one of those people. I wouldn't necessarily consider myself one of them now, because I'm, I'm at a point right now where I'm just more comfortable. And even then, like, I'll still lift a decent amount of weights. Like, like those pull-ups, right, aren't easy. I'm, uh, every time I do a back day, doing my pull-ups, I'm, uh, feeling it the next day. And, uh, when, when I've been going to the gym, like, I, I've been training twice as hard when I've been at the gym as, as opposed to when I'm, uh, when I'm here on stream.
on the water. But uh, one, thing, uh, one thing, though, is, is you're, you're on the right track, right? And uh, you know, you, you've still been making progress, right? And my, my, my recommendation is to enjoy, enjoy the process and uh, like, like eventually, things, like eventually things start to plateau, but uh, you can always still improve yourself make some games where you can. Brent1111, how's it going? You caught me uh, near the end of my workout. How are you doing tonight? I've, uh, once I've done my workout, I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of moving right now. And I'm gonna move, like everything you see in my apartment right now is everything that's left. Uh, I'm gonna take all my weight, I got 500 pounds of weight to move to, uh, to the new place, take it down three flights of stairs, bring it up three flights of stairs. I've been going since uh, since uh, first thing in the morning, feeling good. I got a little bit of brain fog right now just cause uh, I let the brain shut off and the body just do the work, but gotta pull that ripcord and get it started. Yeah, I might. See, I, I didn't think this couch was going to make it up uh, the stairs of where I'm living now, so. But, uh. All right, more quads. I, uh. I did my squats, I did uh, my deadlifts, <laughs> doing my isolation right now. I'm gonna add some weight. Cool. Yeah, this is my uh, second last workout in this apartment, um, and then at the end of tomorrow night, my internet is going to switch from one place to the next. So uh, I'll do my last back stream. I'll do uh, I'll do weighted pull-ups. Uh, I don't want to kill myself because I've been going so hard. So I, I think I'm going to stop at uh, like 100, 155 weighted pound pull-ups. I'm going to do 150 to 175, 100, 150 to 170 with pots. Let's add some more weight to this. And uh, my new place, I'm not going to be able to do, I don't have a door that I can put my pull up bar on, so I bought a pull up rack. And I haven't set it up yet, it's still in the box. But I'm hoping it can handle a decent amount of weight, as well as I'm hoping to do muscle ups on it. So when I move, I'll probably set up my affiliate, and then I can have points for like X number of points, do some muscle ups. But uh, I'm gonna have a room for working out, and I just hope that it's large enough that uh, I can have the camera set up so you can see my head and my feet, and I can uh, do deadlifts. It is comfortable. But uh, honestly, I'm, I'm more likely to sleep on the floor. Um, 2018, when I, when I hurt my back, hurt, I just tore my glute. I mentioned it a bunch of times on stream, blah, blah. But uh, um, 
I started sleeping on the floor because that's the only place I could sleep that was comfortable, and I just got used to it. So uh, literally, I could be on the computer, type away, go lay on the floor, have a nap for a bit, and then uh, maybe I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I make my way towards the bed. Before the pandemic started, I really didn't spend much time at home. Right, my my home was where I uh, was where I cooked, is where I ate, is where I went to sleep. And then come 2020, and uh, now this is yeah. And then I, I brought all my weights, and my my living room is essentially my my weight area. Um, and mostly, I just like to be able to walk without tripping over things, so I I, I keep things relatively clean. Uh, well, thanks for the offer. You get some posing. I, uh, I, I didn't bother setting up my affiliate. Um, for me, my intention isn't necessarily to be a streamer. It's to make my workouts enjoyable. And I'm already getting everything I want uh, with the way things stand right now. I've got some regulars who drop by from time to time. Um, uh, a lot of my streams have become me giving uh, my opinions when it comes to fitness advice. But uh, like I, I'm just happy to have people to talk to, whether it's just one person or, uh, or several. I got uh, my music playing, which you guys can't hear it. I've got a playlist playing right now. It's got like 600 songs on it. Um, it's very like pop-ish, but uh, I, I don't know what half the songs are. But uh, one thing I can't wait is once the world starts up again and I can do partner dancing again. because uh, my legs are actually dig into the, the edges here. And so before I actually fill my hamstrings, I fail just because uh, it hurts a little bit too much. Yeah, that's painful. It's almost like full on my quads. Uh, getting late, and I have got to uh, still move uh, 500 something pounds. So let's see if there's anyone I can share the, the love with. There, I'll uh, send you to uh, some to a regular who. Uh, Drops by the stream. Whoa. Let's close that. He's playing uh, one of my favorite games growing up right now. It's not fitness related, but, well, he, he does do fitness. Right now he's playing retro games, but uh, I'll, send, I'll send you to a viewer. Good night, everybody.